Rob Collister, DFE Motorsport is with us and it is with the Motorsport hat on I'm, I'm referring to you as because, uh, well, we have a look at this, the front page of the local paper this week, it's big screaming headlines, Manx Radio gets the contract for the TT, hasn't gone out to tender. Uh, I thought I'd better bring you in and just get the ins and outs of this because obviously it probably is not quite the same to you as, as it is to in that story, or, or maybe it is. What's going on? Because Manx Radio had a big goodbye last year almost, they went on air and were, at the end of it, it seemed like they were almost uh, wanting people to write in to keep, keep the contract, I don't know, but what yeah. do you think? Well, well, have they lost it? Had they lost it? No, what happened is then their contract came to an end in 2018, we've obviously been in negotiations with Manx Radio since the, the contract ended. Um, we, Hopefully we can pencil in that Manx Radio will be providing the commentary for the TT and the Festival Motorcycling in 2019. We've still got to iron out a few problems. Without going to tender? Isn't this the tricky bit here? Well, let's, I think it's good that I've come up today and I can give you, I think we have to look back at the history first, the, the, the serious events. Mm -hmm. Manx Radio have been involved in the TT um, coverage since 1964. I'm going to take my notes from here so I've got it absolutely right. In 2002, there was a Timbald debate. There was a further debate in Timbald in 2004. At that time, the political members of the members of Timbald decided that Manx Radio's commentary of the TT and the, and the Grand Prix at the Manx Grand Prix at the time should be ring-fenced and only they should provide it. We then move up until 2009 when the old DCCL asked to go out to tender. That at the time was refused by the Council of Ministers of the day. We then move forward to 2017 and um, DFE and um, well should I say the Council of Ministers decided in 2017 that Manx Radio commentary or the t commentary relating to the festival motorcycling and the TT should go out to formal tender. That's all the history. I tell you what, even that in itself agreed. is amazing. It's on, right. it's off, it's this, it's that. Agreed. It's that. We then move forward to January 2018, at which time there was a motion put in Timbald in January 2018 that a committee of three should be set up and to look at the license conditions, the delivery model and the funding of Manx Radio and to report back in July 2018. That was 19. then... Um, 18. Yeah. Oh, 18. 18. Okay. It was then delayed further oh. and we didn't have the, the final vote until January 2019. So all of this is going on in the background and even now they have to come back to Timwell in October 2019 with the business model. So we as a department cannot do anything until Tim will decide what is the future for Manx Radio. You can see how this all plays out. It seems like you, no decisions are being made about anything almost. And this was definitely going to have to be sorted and it hasn't been. It's been pushed back again, right? I think to be perfectly honest, if we did not have the Timbald motion back in January 2018, this would have gone out to tender, like so many other things relating to the TT and, and the Festival of Motorcycling. Okay, let me tell you back, because at one stage there was a massive hoo-ha because Manx Radio only got £50,000 one year, when they wanted a lot, lot more. I think they were asking huge amounts of that particular year. They got £50,000 to cover the, all the, their contractual arrangements. Then last year they, they got doubled to 100000 but did they? Did you see fifty thousand pounds more coverage, or was it exactly the same coverage? Do you have a say on how that money's spent? And this year you're going up to one hundred and thirteen thousand, right. so an increase again Let's give for the same coverage or something better. When I was first elected in two thousand and sixteen, and going into two thousand and seventeen, I had responsibility for motorsport. Manx Radio approached um, the department and asked for an increase in the fee. It was big, I, wasn't it? The department, including myself, held Manx Radio to the contract, which was £50,000 per annum. Um, last year, there was... Oh, they got 100000 didn't they? No, you? bear with me. 2017. Okay. Okay. 17th, so we held them to contract. For 2018, they reckon the cost for producing the programme and providing the commentary had increased. There was a, a continuous dialogue. But you got the same coverage, didn't you? You didn't get anything more? For no, we didn't get anything more, but they felt the cost. Right. Now, okay. there, is, there is side issues with regard to the amount of... And I've got to be very careful because it's not my area. They, they did raise a certain amount of commercial um, um, income from um, Radio TT. That's not my area and I can't really comment on that. At the same time, that has reduced. Now, from a de government department point of view, from our point of view, from DFE, our amount of our, our commercial activities and our commercial income over the last year has increased um, significantly. We're nearly close to three million pounds coming in now for these events. And that goes in um, into the event itself directly 
and it reduces the tax um, the taxpayers liability so it's really good news now on Manx radio side their commercial opportunities have fell now that's part of this discussion I've got to be very careful not to go into that if we go back to your original question as I say in 2017 after being elected I took over the responsibility for motorsport included the TT we held them to contract 2017 there was an between 2016 yeah. and 17 and 18, there was negotiations. They they put a, a figure on the table. I felt it was too high. I think the department felt it was too high. Negotiations happened, and the figure eventually okay, was 100,000. Um, no, I haven't said it. Yeah, you, you, okay. that's, I haven't said it. So what happened then? In the last year, we've had the same negotiations again, and that figure has slightly increased now to a, 113. However, anything above. £100,000 needs a sign-off by Treasury right. and, and the Council of Ministers have obviously been involved in this as well. Do you have any say on how that money is spent then on the actual coverage? I mean, or is it just... Because, I mean, if, if you had more one tender, you could have options on what to do. You know, this is, a, this is what we're offering, that's what we're offering. Do you just hand the money over and they will just provide the service? They have provided details of how much they believe it costs to put on the coverage or to, to provide the commentary for TT and the Festival of Motorcycling. We've gone through those figures. I can't really get involved in this. We do need someone to provide the commentary. We can't go out to tender at the mm -hmm. moment. The figure relating to this year of 113,000, if everything's tied down, we have got an opportunity to make revenue from that because we will uh, maybe be able to sell some of the advertising space. That will reduce the 113,000 down um, to another manageable figure. Okay. I mean, there has been, uh, I think, Jim turns on, on social media saying that, that he what, put in a, some offer some years ago, was it? I think it was him, maybe it was somebody else, but to, to do it. Um, do you still not feel a tender process somewhere along the lines for, for the coverage, even if it stays on Manx Radio, but it's provided by a third party, even like, like Mr. Turner. I'm not involved with him, by the way. I'm just trying to, you know, it, what's the best way forward? Do you just see it constantly? I mean, I think you've already said that you'd like Manx Radio just to have a subvention increase to cover this. Is that right? I, uh, I personally feel that the, the history is, is around Manx Radio. They are a, it's a, a natural home. They it? are a natural home for the TT. They have been for a long time. I've got concerns if we went out to tender and somebody else won it. Who else could tender for it? Is, is there anyone on the island other Which than... Which you don't say, know, do you? Uh, try. That's the thing. And it's more about the value. Are we actually getting value for the money that we pay additionally to the subvention to Manx Radio for, del for providing the commentary for the TT? Now, the, the, the automatic um, solution to that is to go out to tender and test the market. But I still got some niggles myself as a political member with regard to how that would actually work and how... If, for example, somebody else came in and um, a, um, a sort of tender that was significantly less, can they actually deliver it? You just won't know now, what you do. <laughs> agreed. I keep saying, you know, but agreed. You're, you're going on a basis. You, you we don't, don't test know, the system, but we don't can't know. do anything until Timwell resolves its motion. So another year, one more year this year, and then they, they could be saying another goodbye because they don't know who's going to get it again. It's uncertainty for everyone, though, isn't there it? There is, but the one thing that I've tried to do, and I have to say the DFE motorsport team, have, have what they've tried to do since 2016 is to try improve the overall quality for the fans, for the listener, um, for everybody involved in the event. We are breaking this apart and putting it back together better than what it was, say, four or five years ago. Now, one part of that discussion is going to be the commentary. How do we want the commentary for well, it those... It has moved on, has it? Since it? It has, and we've obviously... It's so Same thing every year. Yeah, right? so we are looking at it, and that's one of the negotiations we'll be having with Manx Radio this year, or if we go to tender with the new provider, exactly what do we want? What, right. does, what does the fans expect by way of commentary? Because it has moved on. The, the event is faster. Have we got... It's all electronic on, on computer. You can see what's going on before yeah. even the commentary team probably could tell you because yeah. they're waiting for the next pickup. I mean, it's a massive change in the whole thing. But do, okay, what do you think in, in your ideal way? Just let Max Radio carry on with what they want, or would you want to have some influence over how they do it? I know this is going to sound like a very political. Um, answer, but I think it's the only answer I can give. I cannot second guess what Tim Wilt's going to say right. in October. It's up to Manx. I haven't seen the business case that Manx Radio will present to right. um, the Treasury and then on to um, Tim Wilt. Until I've seen that paper and what they're proposing, I can't comment. But at the end of it, I'm very happy to go on the record to say, depending on what that says, 
I would have no problems going out to tender in order to test the market and to make sure that we're getting value for the taxpayer. Because I've also said in previous interviews that I am a big fan of Manx Radio. I think Manx Radio should deliver the commentary for the TT, but not with an open checkbook.